Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for this workshop. Today, we are going to talk about how to use RTD My Right. This is the app that RTD has recently relaunched and that is available for everybody who wants to book and um, buy tickets using the app. So before we begin, um, I'm just going to give you a very quick housekeeping run, that, run through. Um, you're all here in Zoom and you know you can um, open the meeting in the browser or you can also call into the meeting. It really helps if your camera is on so that we can see your faces and then you can unmute yourself if you have a question and uh, you can use a chat to ask questions also. And we will be recording this meeting and it will be uploaded to YouTube for people who want to learn how to teach this workshop in the future and how to use this app. Um, as always, we're gonna start with introductions. Um, I just need you to tell me your name, your city, and if you've used the RTD My Rat app in the past. And I'll just go through the screen as I see you. Um, I first see Jen. Jen, would you mind sharing with those this, this responses? Yeah, no problem. I'm Jan Oaks. I live in Boulder, Central Boulder, and I'm an ambassador. And I do, I have tried to use my red, but I need a little refresher. Okay, thank you, Jen. Uh, Lisa, I see you next. Let me see if you can unmute. Okay. <laughs> okay. My name is Lisa and I am I live in Lafayette. Um I've played with my ride, but I have not used it. I I will get an access ride that's on my goal list. So that's amazing. Thank you, Lisa. I see uh, Leonard next. Hi, my name is Leonard. I live in Niwa and I use the uh, MyRide app quite a bit. I use the website and the planning tools for RTD and all those sorts of things. Awesome. Thank you, Leonard. Last but not least, we have Adriana. Do you want to go next? Yes, hi, my name is Adriana Paola Palacios Luna, and I am in Boulder. And yes, I have used my right. It's like, yeah, very easy way to get buy tickets, get into the bus. And, and awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Adriana. Okay, um, so let's see. Let's move on. Um, as a general reminder, Mobility for All, we're a program from Boulder County, and our goal is to promote equitable, affordable, and accessible transportation options for everybody, and especially for people who need it the most, um, who are, for example, um, users with limited mobility. And we do believe that multimodal transportation is important for several aspects in, in our lives. Um, transportation will give us access to food, nutrition, health, education, safety, housing, and so on. So it's important to have those um, opportunities to go and access the places that you need to go to improve your quality of life. As general, in general terms, Mobility for All has four objectives. We want to expand affordable transportation. So we, for example, provide eco passes and bus passes. We also foster collaboration. We host the Mobility and Access Coalition, um, who that's a group of stakeholders that meets monthly. And also we promote multimodal transportation. We do this extensively. We host workshops. We um, take calls for people who need help with their um, planning their trips. We have a lot of information on our website and do a lot of technology education too. Uh, we advocate for human-centered transportation planning. So one example with, will be the Mobility and Access for All Ages and Abilities Plan that um, was accepted last year. 
And yeah, we want to be a bridge within hum uh, in between human services and transportation planning and really center humans in what we do and then teach them, um, in this case, the tools that they need to improve their personal mobility. We also do this through the ambassador program. So we currently have six ambassadors across the county and we are um, in the process of upgrading and expanding this program. Um, so this is a picture of us last um, December and yeah, um, we're always happy to have the support of our ambassadors and um, just spend time with them. This workshop is part of a series. So we do teach five different workshops. Today we're talking about the RTD My Ride app. Uh, and we also teach Lyft, Uber, the Transit app, and Google Maps. Now, as a quick introduction to this app, we know um, the very important thing to know for all of you who are trying to improve their knowledge with technology is that there's two different types of phones generally speaking. So we have the iPhones, which are um, you know, made by Apple and have a specific um, software. And then the Android, they run um, a little bit differently and the apps are gonna look slightly differently. All the screenshots that I have here are for um, iPhone users, uh, but even if they're slightly different, um, the, the the things that you can do with either phone are the same. So. Just have that in mind, oops. Regarding safety, um, we know that the pandemic, I guess is officially over. However, everyone is more than welcome to use, um, to feel safe and wear a mask if they ever feel like they need to wear a mask to feel safe when they're riding on Uber, Lyft or public transit. Um, so if you want to, you can of course keep using it. Um, apps are not perfect, so usually when you use them or when you are um, trying to get to a place that the app is telling you to go to, it's important for you to always pay attention, always cross the street at a crosswalk, and um, also have an emergency contact number in case you need it. Um, and yeah, like I said, everyone has the right to wear a mask if they need to. Okay, let's move on to the workshop presentation. Today we're talking about RTD. <clears throat> Usually for people who finish these workshops in person, they receive 10 three hour local passes. And then these workshops are also an opportunity for people to connect with our ambassadors and obviously increase their confidence using this app, My Ride. Okay, so in terms of how to actually download the app, um, it's very simple. So you go to your app store if you have an iPhone or a Google Play or to the Google Play Store if you have an Android phone and then type RTD and the option RTD my right should appear is red and it has the RTD letters in um, white. And then you click open or download. Um, and once you do that, um, you um, will find it, you need to go and find it in your home screen, and then you need to select open. And once you, you've opened it, you will find, um, you need to go to the account option to log in or to sign up for your RTD account. So this is a very, very, very important step for everybody to remember because we need people creating their accounts in order for us to issue RTD electronic tickets. So to do that, you go to account and then you need to tap on new account, the tab that's kind of like on the right side of the screen. And, um, and then you type an email and then a password. And for a lot of people, it will be good to, to remind them to maybe write that email and that password somewhere because sometimes the RTD app logs you out even if you didn't intend to log out. Um, so that's kind of like an issue that we've heard in the past. Um, so it's important for people, especially for older adults to, that, who may not remember in the future to encourage people to not forget this email and password and perhaps even write them somewhere. 
So once you've selected your email and password, you can create a new account and you'll get an email notification um, to the email account that you registered. So you just click on it and it's important that you verify your account so that they know that you're actually the person who owns that email. And once you do that, your account is ready to use. So going back to the RTD app, if you go to the home screen and tap on account, it should show you now a series of options, uh, which include save paid methods, change your password, scan account, and delete account. Um, and this will be the place where you add your credit card um, if you wanted to have a payment method saved here. Okay, so that was kind of like download the app and create an account part of the workshop. Now, once you have both of those things, you're able to buy tickets. And to do that, you need to go back to your home screen and then select buy tickets. And in here you have a bunch of different options. Um, there's different types of tickets, depending on who you are. Access a ride, as, you, as probably most of you know, is the paratransit service that RTD offers. So that will be for people who have a disability and are currently enroll, enrolled um, in Accessory. There's the full fare, um, discount, youth discount, and also lift discount. That's a um, discount for low-income um, individuals. And then once you select your ticket type, you can select then the amount of tickets that you want in the next screen. So you can buy one ticket or multiple tickets. Um, and in this case, for example, I chose Accessory and then there's different prices depending on where you go with Accessory. Once you've selected your ticket, you need to, um, it, the app is gonna let you know, in this case that I'm purchasing a three hour pass. And it's a disclaimer saying there's not a refund um, if, unused passes have an expiration date, so they will expire 45 days after you purchase them. And then, um, and then you, you accept the terms after that. So you can say accept and continue. Oh, and I see your question, Leonard. Do tickets from attending this workshop show up in, in your wallet? Yes, and I'm gonna talk about it later, but yes. Oh, I also have a screenshot of how people can visualize their tickets and um, and that's why it's important to tell them about the email account. But thank you for the question. Let's see. Okay. Um, once you've selected your tickets and once you have said, yes, I accept the terms of condition and disclaimers, then a new screen will appear uh, prompting you to add a new card if you haven't already. So in this case, you need to say, yes, I wanna add a new card. And um, let's see. And then you'll see all of these different um, fields that you need to add. So you need your name, your card number, expiration date, zip code, and then you also have the option of save card, which I really recommend so that you're not needing to do pull out your credit card right before you're gonna use the bus. Um, so that's very helpful. And if during the demonstration, people don't necessarily have to add their credit card information at the moment, but they will need to do it to enter um, it to purchase new tickets. That's when they need to enter uh, their credit card information. Okay, uh, now how you find your tickets. And this is the same way that you will be able to find the tickets that we send you through the workshop. So to find your tickets, you need to go back to the home screen and then tap on ticket wallet. And that's your electronic wallet. So in this case, I purchased a three hour, three hour local pass discount. And as you can see, it says inactive. All purchase passes are gonna say inactive. And then they are also gonna say when they expire. And this is very important to know because you don't need to activate your ticket when you buy it, you need to activate it when you're about to board the bus or the train. 
And that might be another point of confusion. So don't activate it right away. Activate it when you are about to board. And um, once you do, once you activate it, they'll send you another disclaimer saying, are you sure you wanna activate this ticket? This ticket, it needs to be activated prior boarding. Once the ticket is activated, you can't unactivate it. It's telling you when it's gonna expire and, um, and then you need to present an activated pass to the operator and fair inspector. Um, uh, so then just let's say, yes, I'm about to board. I wanna activate it. You do that and then it should appear here um, as a QR code and as a picture of the paper version of this actual ticket. Uh, so you will see first the disclaimer and then the actual ticket with the QR code. And that QR code is what you show to the actual bus driver. So when you go back to your home screen, you'll also see the tickets appear on the, there. And, um, and as you can, you know that it's an active ticket. And I think, yes, we have a picture here of the scanner. So here's a question. Does anybody know where in this scanner you actually need to place your phone? Is it over here in this screen, second screen or third screen? Yes, Paola. Sorry, Adriana. <laughs> I guess either. <laughs> it is like right in the middle. Like that's what the QR. Do you know what this one at the bottom is for? The one in the bottom is like for echo passes or, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I see you had a comment uh, on the chat. Did you want to talk about it? Oh, yes. I put like um, once we did this workshop, uh, like, community members were like uh, downloading the app, creating their accounts. When they got the confirmation email in some forms, um, but maybe it wasn't like the last update phone or something mm -hmm. like that. The, the confirmation email was completely empty. It seems like an empty email, but okay. then suddenly we just kind of click in the blank space and it actually Took, took us to the confirmation email mm. thing. Okay. So Has, mm. and even if they think that it's like an empty email, just trying to click in the middle will take mm -hmm. them to confirmation. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. I don't think I knew about that. Has anybody else seen that or is familiar with that? Okay. So it might be like, um, yeah, like a certain type of phone it sounds like, mm -hmm. okay. Maybe, maybe phones that are older that don't have that ability to like embed buttons on the screen, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's good to know that they still need to click in the middle of the screen to actually act, verify their accounts. Okay, yes, yeah, so you'll grab your phone and put it in the middle. I wish it was a little bit more intuitive because I, when I first used it, I just didn't know where. Um, so yeah, it's the middle one. And that's it. That's how you download, activate your account and purchase tickets from, from RTD. And then at this moment, we will do a demonstration. So this is where usually it works better if we break into smaller rooms, smaller groups, and then go through the steps with people because we know that they may encounter different issues, maybe some people don't, maybe they already had an account, they don't remember what email they used, maybe um, people are more interested in looking at the trip planner portion of this app, which I didn't really cover. But if you go to the trip planner tab, it will take you to the RTD um, website or mobile version of their website. And then you can see what are the, um, what one is your next ride coming depending on where you are. And another thing that I forgot to mention and it's something that we just learned last week is that RTD has now a new calling center. And I believe you could, it's both in English and Spanish. And uh, if you're at a specific bus stop or train stop, 
you can call the number and they'll let you know when the next ride is coming in real time. So it seems like that's the more accurate, although I think Trip Planner works pretty well for me too. Um, but yeah, I'll actually add that number to this presentation too, because um, that might be helpful for people who are just probably a little bit more intimidated with using the Trip Planner option here. Maybe the, it will be easier for people to just call and get like a recording voice telling them when is the next ride. Um, yeah, so for the demonstration, we will do the smaller groups. And then at the end um, of the workshop, people need to upload their, um, sorry, respond to the post workshop survey. And, um, and then we'll send them 10, three, three hour local passes so that they can explore and actually use the bus. However, it's important for us to remember that during the month of July and August, all buses are free. So for those of you who haven't tried it, it will be a good time of the year to, to use the bus. And, um, and then we will probably continue doing more workshops on RTD after those months um, pass so that people can actually use those um, bus passes that we issue. So I appreciate everyone's time and I'm going to stop the recording now. Um, and yeah, I want to stop more for to see if, if you all have any more more questions.